Fam, fam, fam. Life is different right now. Isn't it, Reagan? <laughs> She's in. Mm -hmm. So much to tell you guys, so much to share. We'll do that soon. Just trying to track down Reagan right now because she ran out here behind my parents and said, I'm going to go look at the cows because Dad got cows apparently. We're going to try to find her and talk to her a little bit and show you the little man. As long as I can find her. You find the cows? Yeah, they're Out there. I don't even know where they're at. They're oh, the I see. They're under the tree over there, laying down. It's some Angus crossbreed with something or another for, that's something that's better for raising on grass. So, how you feeling? It's been good. four days. <laughs> Five. Five days now. I'm already <laughs> losing track of time, oh my gosh. She did good, four. she didn't need like any kind of additional surgery or just anything at all, just. Stitches. <laughs> yeah, no stitches, nothing, just all natural. And they were like, wow. Like, she did really good. I mean, it was a long, hard labor. Cause you were having contractions for like three days. And then she was like, actually like, we were in the birthing center, which is essentially like a house, but it's a house that's like right across the parking lot from the hospital, just in case you need emergency attention. You're right there and you're not like 45 minutes from the hospital. Not to mention then a phone call and then driving distance and driving back. No painkillers. Cause that one stuff no. that they gave you, that wasn't a painkiller anyways. That was just like some antibiotic. Yeah, it was just because of I had heart surgery, yeah. so they had to. Yeah, so that, that wasn't even a painkiller type of thing because somebody's like, oh, I see the IVs, she must have had something. No, it wasn't It wasn't for painkiller medication or anything like that. It was no. just for, for blood or of, something or? It was just because I had heart surgery when I was one, so. Yeah, it's just. Much bleeding, you have to have antibiotics. That's just something that her heart doctor recommended she had. But other than that, she had no, no painkillers or nothing at yeah. all. I guess that's why God gave us women, right? I mean, we both don't take Tylenol or Ivy. No, we don't take any of that stuff. We don't take, yeah, yeah, nothing for headaches, pains, nothing. We just, just see a high quality chiropractor. That's what we do, right? Here he is. <laughs> oh man. He had socks on. He's a cutie. He's asleep right now though. I mean, I might be partially biased. <laughs> I don't know. He does look a lot like me when I was a baby, right? Sure. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. Would, re you would remember that, you know? <laughs> He's got like this auburnish, brownish hair. He's a cutie, seven pounds, 10 ounces. He's smiling. Yeah, look at him smiling. Born on July 8th? Yep. 8.47 p.m. Mm -hmm. How long was he? 21 inches. 21 inches? Yep. He's already got the baby merch on because, you know, <laughs> LNP. Well, like he had the LNP, LNP right shield, there. but... And then, yeah, we, he's got we more. We were not going to say we wet that this morning. <laughs> yeah. He has more more LNP baby merch, of course, because, you know, always got a rep. I mean, he's been easy so far. Obviously, a lot can change after the first five days, but, like, he's been such a good, like, laid-back baby. Obviously, right now, he sleeps 22 hours a day, so that helps a little bit. <laughs> more up at night than anything. Yeah, he's mostly up at, like... 11 o'clock is usually when he's like awake awake is like 11 to midnight at yeah. least the last few days that's how it's been that's marshall that's the new the new little man uh, reagan did great she did absolutely awesome i was like freaking i was so nervous and i i know that like this might be something that you guys want to hear in on most of the time if you're pushing for as long as she was or half as long as she was which for how long were you pushing like four to six hours right. i think it was closer know. to five or six i don't know <laughs> After a while, you're not you're not really paying attention to the time. No, I mean we got there. It was 4:45, 4:50 in the morning, and we were there until we were there until 2 a.m. But baby was born at 8:47. But like I think she was pushing from like probably three to eight, two probably. to three ish to 8 p.m. or so. So it was it was a long, long late afternoon of you know having to go th watch through that, and I just felt so bad Try for not her. To fall asleep. Well, I just felt so bad. You know, because I don't know what you expect when you go in, but like, you know, this is what I was believing for. I was like, okay, she's gonna come in here, she's gonna start to go into labor, and then when she starts pushing, baby's gonna be out in less than an hour. Like, that was my hope, that's what I was praying for, that's what I was, like, hoping for her health and safety and well-being. But then, like, when it got into, like, an hour, and then two hours, and then three hours, and then four hours, I was like, oh my gosh. And then it got to a point where they're like, you're getting some progress, but not that much. So they're like, either baby has to start coming out here soon. Like 15 minutes. Yeah, like you've got about 15 minutes and baby's gotta either start coming through or admit you into the hospital and give you medication and some other stuff to get this going along here. And they weren't gonna do like C-section or anything like that because he was totally fine. Like he was yeah. head down, everything was perfect. But it was just kind of like, they just weren't seeing enough progress to feel safe having her there any longer. Just because her pain, she'd have to keep tolerating. He eventually would've came out, but it's just like, how long do you want to go through this? Because it's getting late into the evening and you've been going through this for a long time now. They said, you've got about 15 minutes and then we'll 
reevaluate and decide. Well, when they said you got about 15 minutes before we have to go to the hospital, that baby was out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was in another 15, 20 minutes go by, the baby was out. Everybody was crying, celebrating, just having just a wonderful like moment in that room and it was just it was really great it really was something special i got very teary-eyed and like ball my eyes out and stuff like that was that was freaking emotional and, and he on me right? <laughs> yeah and then he pooped on it right away so it's like welcome <laughs> you know what i mean like worked up a bowel movement through all that pushing the thing that i could give any kind of advice if i could would be just like you got to keep a level head and just try to keep a smile on your face and just tell her how amazing she is and tell her how great she is and tell her how amazing this baby's gonna be when he's in this world or she's in this world. Like, if I wasn't doing that, how much more rough would it have been? A lot. <laughs> it just it just makes things harder when you're just yeah. kind of like, you're not gonna be able to do this, honey. We gotta go. It's not good, and freaking out doesn't help anybody else, mm -hmm. and it definitely doesn't help her peace of mind. And the thing that I was nervous about most was not that she wouldn't be able to have a healthy baby, because I was already believing for that. Didn't, I didn't question that, but I just thought, if she does not have this baby all natural like she wanted to, like her goal has been that she's been like, like she's had her eyes set on, it's gonna hurt her her in a sense of feeling like for the next one I can't do this you know what I'm saying almost like I can't do it like I, I already tried it with the first one I was pushing for hours it didn't happen like I can't do it you know and then almost too scared to do it again because she didn't get the result that she was hoping for and she tried her hardest that type of thing I was so so relieved and emotional like when she did have baby because I was like you did it like you did it and then like she can have peace of mind that she can do it again if she could do him, because they say that the first are usually the hardest, she can do it again and she can be confident that she knows what she's doing. Pretty much it. I mean, I just wanted to welcome him onto the YouTube channel. I don't know how much he's going to be on the YouTube channel right away, but I know that down the road he's going to be in a lot of videos, I'm sure, on and off. So it's just something I thought he needed to be properly welcomed into this YouTube family, to be part of the family with us and you guys. There's one more message I want to leave for you guys at the end of this video. It's a message that I feel a lot of people need to hear. It's a message that's more directly related to like me in my life and my perspective on God's goodness. But I just thought that this would be a really good thing for you guys to hear to paint a picture and have a better perspective when you look at life of just how many things truly are affected by just the smallest bits of the Lord's goodness. And you gotta recognize those little bits of goodness or you're never gonna see anything but bad. That makes life miserable. Hopefully enjoy this ending clip and also just a quick little reminder for our current giveaway truck that does end Wednesday, July 15th. So if you're wanting to get entered, we also have 20X Entries Live, which is only alive for the last few days of the giveaway. It wasn't offered any other time throughout the whole promotion. Links in the description if you want to enter that. But uh, enjoy this ending. Hopefully, guys, take something from it. Let me share with you guys a story about God's goodness and what that looks like to me. Many of us, including myself, often forget that we are not in control. Now, don't let that statement confuse you. We do have free will, the ability to make our own choices. God won't simply choose for us, even if we do call ourselves a Christian. However, he will always offer a voice of reason if you're listening or asking. Now, I'm not saying it'll sound like someone shouting in your ear, but that voice may come differently for all of you. There's no exact way you have to hear from our Father above. For me, it's more of a gut feeling, an urge, an emotion telling me yes or no, or my spirit pulling me more one way or another, and I don't know why. Sometimes even in my dreams while I sleep. But please, don't call me crazy. Now, let me share with you a story. Just a small glimpse of God's goodness that hits home every time I tell it. In fact, this is the only time I'm publicly sharing it with anybody and what it means to me. Grandpa LNP, many of you may know him or have seen him on the videos. He shared this story with me countless times as a kid growing up and I'll never forget the impact that it's had on my life. This is an example of God's mercy, his grace, and his goodness. Grandpa told me when he was seven or eight years old, he had a dog that he loved dearly. Took him everywhere he went, two peas in a pod. One day they went out together and came upon a huge hornet's nest up in a tree. He told me he didn't know any better as a kid and started throwing rocks at the hive. Next thing he knew, they all started coming down in a swarm towards him, so he ran as fast as he possibly could. But his dog stayed behind, taking all the stinging for him and died that day. Depending on how you look at it, this to me looks like a small example of what it's like when you think about how Jesus Christ died for you and me, even though he did nothing wrong. He gave us all a second chance. Now how does this have anything to do with God's goodness? Well, he had a bigger picture for that little boy that day than he ever could have known. He had plans for him to meet my grandmother, to have three little girls, to then adopt in many more wonderful children and give them a better life. To build a life with a foundation for others to look at as a blueprint of what being a godly man or woman looks like. Still not convinced? Let me share you some more examples of God's goodness. He had a plan for my mom to survive an accident that nearly took her life as a teenager. They told her she would never have children. Yet here I am, 
How good is our God? Let me give you some more insight. For my mother to meet my father, which led to me and my siblings being able to make it into this world. Need some more? I'll gladly share. How about me starting YouTube, which was never in the plans, then starting a giveaway, which also wasn't in the plans, which led to my wife entering my first giveaway, which then led to her posting a picture of herself in one of my hoodies on Instagram and tagging me, which led to us starting to talk and being married within eight months of knowing each other. Now, if you don't have an understanding of God's goodness, you might call me crazy for that. This can only happen with God's hand in the mix. After one year of marriage, having our little boy Marshall and this is where it really hits home. Now how could my little boy be here today? The Lord wouldn't have shown my grandpa a glimpse of his goodness when he was just a little boy. Are you seeing his goodness yet? Do you see all the things and events that came from one small offering of God's mercy and his grace, his goodness? Think on this. I would not be here today if those hornets would have killed my grandfather on that day that he made a poor choice as a boy. The list of things that would be differently today if that had taken place would be astronomical. That's a glimpse of God's goodness and what it looks like to me. Now don't confuse losing a loved one with whether or not the Lord loves or cares for you. There will always be hard times. Even as a Christian, you experience losses all the time. That's just part of this journey we call life. But it's what you take from the ups and the downs that should be the difference. God's goodness even works through the seemingly toughest times. You just might not see it yet. Without tough times and lessons learned, how would we grow as people? How would we build character? Life is all perspective. It's just hard to see anything but the bad unless you acknowledge the good. But there are so many other ways the Lord has been looking out for me along the way. That's simply a small example of how drastic life could otherwise be different without recognizing God's goodness in my life. I will never claim to be a perfect person and none of us should. I believe only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can hold that title. Let me challenge you this one thing. Talk to God today. As silly as it seems at times, ask Him for His guidance. Ask Him what you can do for Him. For me, it's making this video to let others know just how great He is. Maybe He will put something on your heart. Something that will be life-changing for you and the people around you. It's not your job or mine to force people into believing anything. But it's our duty as a believer to share about God's goodness. You never know how far it can go. It could change someone's life forever. That's what God's goodness looks like to me. Oh,